Introduction Disaster is always injurious to lives and properties. About 75% of the world's population lives in areas affected at least once by earthquake, cyclone, hurricane, flood, drought, tsunami, landslide, etc. Billions of currency losses every year affects annual growth in many countries. Recently, multifarious and frequently occurred natural disasters and some man-made disasters have brought about massive economic and life loss to the affected regions and hindered the regional social economic development. Before elaborating on disaster and its management, it is very essential to understand about disaster, its types, causes, effects, etc. Now, what is disaster? Disaster is a Greek word which means bad star. Disaster occurs when hazards meet vulnerability. A disaster is the result of an immediate situation or the result of a long set process which disrupts human life as well as environment caused by extraordinary destructive phenomena or human induced hazards resulting in human hardships and suffering beyond recovery until external aid is brought in. Types of disaster. Broadly, disasters are classified into two categories, natural disasters and man-made disasters. Natural disasters. United Nations has defined natural disaster as it is the occurrence of a sudden or major misfortune which disrupts the basic fabric and normal functioning of a society or community. India's unique geoclimatic position makes the country vulnerable to a variety of natural disasters. India has 7,517 kilometers long coastline on three sides and has the Himalayan range, one of the world's youngest holded mountain ranges, which extends almost uninterrupted for 2,500 kilometers on the fourth side. That is why India has to face a variety of natural disastrous events every year. Types of Natural Disasters The phenomena which causes these disasters are wind and water-related disasters and the disasters are typhoons, hurricanes, cyclones, sheet flooding, marine and river-based floods and droughts. Climate-related disasters Heat and cold waves, global warming, sea level changes, ozone depletion, El Nino and forest fires. Mountainous disasters, landslides and snow avalanches. Geological disasters, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and tsunamis. Almost all parts of India experience one or more of the above mentioned disasters. Based on the frequency and vulnerability, the entire country may be classified into three regions. The first is the Himalayan region. This region covers an area of about 500,000 square kilometers and is prone mainly to earthquakes, landslides, avalanche and bush fires. The North and Central Indian region. This region is having some great river systems and during monsoons, they cause floods of high degree. Parts of this region also experiences droughts when the rains are insufficient. The third is the coastal region. This region is also very sensitive to cyclones and hurricanes originating from the oceans. 
The second type of disaster is man-made disasters. Human-induced hazards come under this category. The major reason for such large number of disasters is the failure of human beings, mistakes or malfunctions in one form or the other. The main types of man-made disasters and the phenomena which causes them are industrial and technological disasters. These include industrial accidents, explosions and radioactive leakages in reactors. Fire accidents. Fires in cities and towns, fire accidents in industries, coal mine fires and forest fires. Rail and road accidents, human failures, equipment failures, washing away of tracks, collapse of bridges, landslides due to blasting, unmanned railway crossings, sabotage and tampering with the tracks. Air and sea accidents, aircraft and ship accidents, machinery breakdown of these, overloading of boats or ships, poor quality of equipment, poor maintenance of machinery. Biological phenomena, plague, dengue, malaria, diarrhea, chikungunya, encephalitis, HIV or AIDS and hepatitis, famine, diseases in animals and destruction of crops. Complex disasters, terrorism, nuclear tests, spacecraft failures and fall of satellite garbage. Whether disaster is natural or man-made, it is an event that negatively affects life, property, livelihood and industries, often resulting in permanent changes in human society, ecosystems and environment. Earthquakes Earthquakes are one of the most frightening, dangerous and destructive natural hazards. The impact of earthquake is sudden with hardly any warning. Their results are terrifying. Due to earthquakes, rivers may change their course. Although earthquakes never kill people directly, many deaths and injuries result from falling objects and the collapse of structures. Till date, it is not possible to predict the earthquakes in terms of exact place and time of occurrence, magnitude, etc. Therefore, it is very necessary to understand about the earthquakes which we are experiencing too frequently. An earthquake can be defined as tremor or convulsions of a part of the Earth's surface because of a series of shock waves through the rocks. These are vibrations caused by the sudden release of energy beneath the Earth's surface, usually as a result of displacement of rocks along active faults. Under stress, rocks can be bent, but beyond a tolerance limit, they break with a net displacement across the fault, energy is released and earthquake results. According to a latest information by US Geological Survey National Earthquake Information Center, a considerable number of earthquakes have been recorded. In 2011 itself, 2,477 earthquakes of magnitude 5 and above have been experienced. The frequency of such earthquakes are earthquakes of magnitude 8 and above, on an average 1 annually, 7 to 7.9, 15, 6 to 6.9, 134, and 5 to 5.9, 1,319. When an earthquake is generated, on the sea floor or ocean floor, seismic waves travel through the column of water and reach the surface. These are called tsunami. Tsunamis travel at speeds of several hundred kilometers per hour and are commonly not noticed in an open ocean, 
because their height is usually less than 1 meter and the distance between the wave crests is several kilometers. When tsunamis approach sea coast, the waves slow down and rise up to heights of 20 to 30 meters with tremendous velocities of more than 500 kilometers per hour and cause great destructions. It is also noted that earthquakes generally of magnitude greater than 6.5 on the Richter scale that occur on the ocean floor and cause vertical displacement on the oceanic crust produce tsunami. Classification of Earthquakes Earthquakes are broadly classified into two categories, natural earthquakes and man-made earthquakes. Majority of earthquakes are natural and disastrous. They are the result of sudden movement of rocks within the earth along faults. They are also known as tectonic earthquakes. That part within the earth where rupture begins and energy releases in the form of seismic waves. This is called focus or hypocenter. This part may lies within few hundred meters or may some few hundred kilometers deep within the earth. Depending upon the depth of focus, three classes of earthquakes are recognized. Number one, shallow focus earthquakes, which have a depth of focus up to 60 kilometers. Intermediate earthquakes, which have a depth of focus between 60 and 300 kilometers and deep focus earthquakes which have a depth of focus of more than 300 kilometers. Earthquake magnitude is the quantitative measurement of total energy released during an earthquake at its source. On the basis of magnitude, the earthquakes are grouped into five classes. Class A, more than 7.8 magnitude. Class B, between 7 and 7.8 magnitude. Class C, between 6 and 6.99 magnitude. Class D, between 5.3 and 5.99 magnitude. And Class E, which has a magnitude less than 5.3. Man-made earthquakes. Earthquake vibrations caused by human activities are included in this category. They are also called artificial earthquakes. Seismic waves. During earthquakes, number of seismic waves generate. First, primary or P waves. They are also called push and pull waves. They are fastest in their velocities and that is why they reach first at the seismic stations. They are like sound waves and they can transmit through solids, liquids and gaseous media. Secondary or S waves, they are also called shear waves. They are slower than the primary waves. They reach after the primary waves. They are like light waves and can transmit through solids only. After these waves, the longitudinal or surface waves reach at the recording station. They are slowest in their velocities and they travel at or near the surface of the earth. Because of their slow velocity, they cause maximum damage during the earthquakes. Causes of earthquakes Seismologists have observed number of causes and activities which are responsible for earthquakes. The important ones are tectonic causes, volcanic activities, reservoir triggered activities and human activities etc. Tectonic causes the main cause of earthquakes is the structural disturbances resulting within parts of the earth's crust or mantle. Most of such earthquakes are tectonic earthquakes 
which are highly disastrous vertical and lateral displacement along the active faults plate boundaries etc are the causes of severe earthquake activities volcanic activities during volcanic activities the surrounding area experiences seismic shocks although most of the shocks of this type are not so severe but local and nearby areas may be damaged disastrously it is not necessary that all volcanic eruptions give rise to earthquakes but when eruptions are of explosive and blasting type tremors are generated when huge quantity of lava is thrown out suddenly under great pressure and roof of the empty magma chambers collapse the surrounding region experiences shocks reservoir triggered activities seismicity associated with the impounding of water in artificially created reservoirs come in this category earthquakes associated with koyna reservoir western maharashtra is unique because it is one of the few sites in the world where triggered earthquakes of magnitude 6 continue to occur nearly 4 decades after the first major activity in 1967 the annual filling cycles continue to weaken the fault zone at koyna and changes in stresses are introduced by reservoir fluctuations values of pore fluid pressure change every time which causes continuing seismicity at koyna human activities on ground and underwater nuclear tests blasting in open and underground mines working of heavy machines in industrial areas movement of locomotives along railway tracks transportation of heavy vehicles on the highways landslides along hill slopes etc generate weak as well as severe vibrations earthquakes and disaster management among all natural calamities earthquake is the most unpredictable and destructive natural hazard within a few seconds a havoc of an enormous scale can be seen in the form of death injuries and destruction without early warning or with very little warning it is impossible to make adequate and all necessary arrangements against the damage and losses due to earthquakes hence there are increasing efforts to lessen the impact of disasters on all sections of society in case of earthquakes the following requirements are common for management efforts drilling equipment and heavy lifting machineries are needed for search of living beings rescue hospitalization and emergency medical aid to injured people large number of people are forced to leave home with little of their personal belongings to safer locations communication and transportation facilities in the affected region needs for shelters with minimum requirement of toilet facilities to the people providing food and water to the affected people and trained rehabilitation teams etc seismic zoning disaster mapping is a tool for assessing storing and conveying information on the geographical location and spread of the effects of disasters disaster maps usually show disaster impact zones now preparation of seismic zone maps is a highly technical task which requires collection of data for several decades or even centuries at present india has been divided into four damage risk zones zone second this zone covers major part of the country and it is the low damage risk zone earthquakes of magnitude between 4 and 4.6 fall in this zone zone third this is moderate damage risk zone in our country earthquakes of magnitude 4.7 to 5.3 come in this zone zone fourth this is high damage risk zone covers extra peninsular part of india part of gujarat koyna region of maharashtra 
earthquakes of magnitude between 5.4 and 6 observed in this zone. Zone fifth, this is the very high damage risk zone in our country. This zone covers part of Himalaya, north eastern part of India and portions of Gujarat. This is one of the seismically prone areas in the world. Earthquakes of magnitude more than 6 come in this zone. Earthquake resistant buildings. Considering that most human losses are due to collapse of buildings, the problem of safety could best be taken care of through a pre-disaster prevention approach. After some of the disastrous earthquakes in the country, a number of actions are being taken. Hazard evaluation and risk assessment, hypothetical building damage scenario, strictness to follow bylaws for damage resistant structures, techno legal regime for the country, technology transfer provisions, strengthening of information technologies, human resource development, upgrading and strengthening of seismological instrumentation network, preparation of seismotectonic atlas of India and suggestions for future activities. Role of remote sensing and aerial photography. Remote sensing and aerial photography by satellites and aircrafts are valuable information gathering tools for disaster managers and are ideally suited for disaster management. They provide a database from which the evidence left behind by past disasters can be interpreted. With other information combinations, one can indicate the areas that are potentially dangerous. Predictability, forecasting and warning of earthquakes. Earthquakes cannot be forecast yet because there is no accurate warning system at present. On the basis of past seismic records, the areas which are prone to seismic activities could be taken as a general warning because the exact time and place of the next earthquake, particularly a major event, cannot be indicated. In some cases, certain warning signals occur before an earthquake such as unusual behavior of birds, animals and reptiles, sudden change in water levels in wells, widening of existing natural cracks on the earth's surface, etc. Public Awareness Campaigns Awareness remains one of the major tools for preparing communities for risk reduction and it is most effective through face-to-face -face interactions, electronic media and print media. Relief Measures Relief measures are the immediate need in the post-disaster scenario when an unknown number of victims have been affected and even their location is not clearly known. In such type of circumstances, search, rescue and evacuation are the processes which are carried out immediately after the disaster. Shelters for victims Various types of disasters need different shelter strategies. The varying shelter strategies may be large shelter space, temporary relief camps, rehabilitation settlements, repair and restoration, etc. Clearance of debris. Debris from collapsed buildings, bridges and other structures as well as uprooted trees, electric poles and wires, hoardings, damaged vehicles, goods, accumulated solid waste which may be of biodegradable and non-degradable nature, etc. are the biggest hindrance to search, rescue and relief operations. They create disruption in communication services and transportation. Debris clearance is the first step towards re-establishment of transport and communication network. Apart from this, we will have to take care of disposal of dead bodies, fire accidents and damage assessment. Earthquake safety rules. What to do before an earthquake? If the moment of earthquake can be anticipated, it is safest to remain out of doors immediately before the onset of the earthquake. One should leave the house and stay out in the open or in the temporary camps till the scare is over. Keep stock of drinking water, some foodstuffs, first aid equipment, 
clothings, radios, emergency medicines, blankets, a crowbar, shovel, pick and rope, electric torch, some candles and a helmet ready for you and for every member of the family. Ensure that water heaters and other gas appliances are firmly fixed and shut off when not in use as broken gas pipes or appliances are likely to cause fire hazards. Secure all heavy objects like furniture, refrigerators, storage cabinets, etc. to the walls and place large and heavy objects on the lower shelf. Top heavy objects should be braced or anchored. Find out the location of the nearest first aid post, police station and fire station and approach it for help if required. Join the civil defense organization and train yourself and members of your family in first aid, rescue, firefighting, etc., which will help you, your family, and neighbors. Conduct occasional home earthquake drills so that your family has the knowledge to avoid unnecessary injuries and panic in the event of an earthquake. The more responsible members of the family may be taught how to turn off electricity, gas, and water at the main switches or valves. Educate all members of the family as to what to do in such emergencies so that you are prepared in the event of earthquake, that is, at home, whilst driving a car, at work, in a shop, in a cinema hall, etc. What to do during an earthquake? Since earthquakes last only for a few seconds, the earthquake can be all around you even before you are aware of it. Keep cool. Don't panic. Panic causes heavy injuries. The ground motion frightening to all. In the event, the safest place is an open space building. If this is not suitable, do not try to run from a building during earthquake. If it catches you indoors, take cover under a desk, table, bench. Avoid standing just outside the main door or near the outside walls. This is usually an unsafe place. Watch for falling plasters, bricks, ceiling fixtures and other loose objects. Stay away from glass. Do not use candles, matches or other open flames either during or after the earthquake. If the earthquake catches you outside, move away from buildings and utility wires Stay in the open area until the tremor stops. Do not run through or near buildings. The greatest danger from falling debris is just outside doorways and close to the outer walls. If you are in a moving car, stop as quickly and safely as safety permits, away from buildings or trees, but stay in the vehicle. A car is an excellent seismometer and will jiggle on its springs during an earthquake, but it is a good place to stay until the earthquake stops. Avoid escalators. Even staircases may be crowded by escapees. Take your turn. What to do after an earthquake? After the earthquake is over, there is a tremendous rush of rescue work. Those who have escaped injuries will be trying to rescue those who are trapped. Now, if you are one of the trapped persons, wait patiently for your turn. Remain calm and conserve your energy after the earthquake is over. Check your utilities, but do not turn them on. Earth movement may have cracked water, gas and electrical conduits. If you smell gas, open windows and shut off the main valve. Then, leave the building and report gas leakage to authorities. Do not re-enter the house until a civil defense official says it is safe. Check for fire and fire hazards and secure fire extinguishers. Do not strike matchsticks unless you are sure there is no gas leak around. If mains of water damaged, shut off the supply at the main valves. If electrical wiring is shorting, close the switch at the main meter box. Check your electric gas, water and sewerage connections. They may have been damaged beyond immediate repair. You will have to live without them for some time. Turn on the transistor, radio or television to get the latest information or bulletin and aftershock warnings. Stay off the telephone except 
to report an emergency. Stay out of severely damaged buildings. Aftershocks can crash them further. Keep away from hanging portions of buildings or overhanging cliffs as they may fall due to aftershocks which may continue for some time. Look for the injured in your family or neighbors families because you know where they were and probably still are. Render such assistance as you can until medical aid arrives. At present whatever technology is available the prediction of earthquake is not possible but through proper disaster management programs, the losses and damages can be minimized.